Hello, YouTube. My name is Alan. And it's that time once again. Let us talk the metal. Tonight, we're going to look at some newer black metal bands. Kind of late in 2022, I got back into listening to more black metal for the first time in several years. It's a you know, genre that I enjoy, but I don't listen to it constantly. Like most genres, I tend to have periods where I listen to a lot of it. But then I go through periods where I don't listen to a lot of it. And I kind of switch gears into other genres for you know a while, maybe several years. And it's been several years since I went on a pretty big black metal kick. I play an album here and there, of course. But in terms of diving in, checking out a lot of newer bands, stuff like that, mm, it's probably been over five years, somewhere like mid to 2010s was the last time that I paid a lot of attention to the black metal goings on. But later in 2022, picked up on a thing here and a thing there, and before you knew it, it started going down that rabbit hole. And so tonight, I'm going to talk about a few of the uh, relatively cool sort of bands on more the raw black metal side, very underground stuff that I've enjoyed a lot in recent months. A quick note before we show bands here: some people, of course, always you know question and wonder, yeah, are these bands sketchy at all? I can't guarantee it. You know, I've looked around information on these bands i don't see anything particularly alarming in what i have found but a lot of these artists these days do stay very very underground they don't publish a lot of stuff they play in a million other projects it is beyond my capabilities to track down every lead about every one of you know two dozen side projects to my knowledge none of these bands are part of the you know nsbm scene if they were, I wouldn't be endorsing them here. I'm not trying to cancel bands or anything like that, but I'm also not going to use you know my channel or my platform to endorse or hype bands that are into you know that kind of NS stuff. I have no interest in that particular vibe. I'm talking about these three bands because I think they're all making some very cool music, and that's what we're going to check out tonight. If something turns up that yeah, one of these bands is you know eating baby fur seals or whatever, then. Yes, uh, that needs to be you know circulated and known, and then people can decide for themselves if they want to listen to the band anymore or if they don't. Enough with that. Let's go ahead. Now we're going to, of course, have to jump around to some different scenes in Europe. And our first stop tonight is going to be Portugal, where a black circle has been created by some different artists and have a different bands going on. The one that seems to have gotten the most attention, especially here in the past year or two, is Black Silis. Uh, Silis is another word for sackcloth, so it kind of refers to that. It's you know a device that was meant for like you know self penitence and flagellation, where you wore this you know vest or shirt of extremely coarse hair that would, you know, at best itch and irritate the heck out of you, and at worst would actually you know you know rip up your skin and you know cause you to bleed and things. So, ew. Can you say ew and still be considered hardcore true grim black metal? I might have to work on that. Anyway, Black Silas has actually put out several albums at this point. This is their sixth one called Esoteric Atavism that came out in 2022. And let's check out a quick clip from the opening track, Beyond the Veil. <laughs> So there is a taste of Black Silas from Portugal. This band goes for you know, a very, very lo-fi production, as you can hear there. Lots of echo, uh, very hollow sound to it. 
and it's kind of a dominant feature of their music most of the time. I've heard a couple of them. I think I have two, and I may have heard a third, so I have not heard their whole catalog. But yeah, it seems to be something the band really does focus on. This guy wants to amplify that low-end production as much as possible. What makes the band interesting to me isn't just the fact that they're making it as you know lo-fi as they can, but that when you listen through the production, you know there is some pretty cool and furious music going on. There's some you know good, fast, you know furious, but also melodic riffage that's you know present. The vocals are also delivered in a way that I like. Those are kind of your know, key ingredients for me when you get into this style of black metal. Of course, a huge part of it is the atmosphere. Can you generate that right atmospheric vibe? If not, you're not going to get very far because I think you know that is you know one of the sort of main goals for this style of music. It's not going to work if it sounds you know particularly you know happy or you know, clean or you just feel like you're sitting on a bus somewhere. You want this kind of music to give you that sort of you know escapism that you know transport you into that dark, misty, smoke-filled, cavernous. Woodland, dungeon, cave, whatever it is. Again, it's meant to sort of provoke the imagination. Lots of these bands, like the ones I'm talking about, yeah, they go for this. You know, they're playing up the black and white graphics, of course, a la you know Dark Throne and all the forefathers. They're playing up you know the very obscured photographs. Some folks will say that's kind of cliche that it's been done, but if a newer band can still do it well, that's okay with me. And I think Black Silas does it pretty well indeed. The production can be a wall for some folks. I understand a lot of folks are not going to like it. Even fans of some other black metal may find Black Silas's production just too much to get through. But there is some cool music underneath all that, if you can make it through. All right, let's move on to band number two. For this one, we're going over to Bosnia and Herzegovina, where... They have their own version of the Black Circle created, which is the Black Plague Circle of bands. And once again, these artists, you know, they're in a ton of different projects. Some of them are one-person projects. Some of them may have, you know, a couple of individuals collaborating. Uh, but the one that has caught my attention over the past few months is a band called Sulfuric Night. This is something that was recommended to me by uh, somebody who was into the scene locally. Checked them out, and yeah, really liked their particular style. Uh, this is their first official full-length album from 2019. It's called Forever Cursed. And so let's see what the Black Plague Circle from Bosnia-Herzegovina has to offer. And check out a clip from, again, I'm just going to do the intro songs for most of these. This one, if I remember right, is simply numbered. I think the tracks are just one through six. So we'll check out the first track. So there is a clip from the first track on Forever Cursed by Sulfuric Knight from Bosnia-Herzegovina. Very cool band. I like their style a lot. While the production still has you know raw tendencies to it, it's much clearer than something like Black Silas. So you can actually hear most of the parts going on pretty clearly if you're paying attention to it. You know, 
vocals are a little more forceful, a little bit, you know, the less, you know, tortured screaming, a little bit more of like, you know, sort of, you know, the angry, you know, demonic snarl type thing going on, but it works well. Once again, you know, very strong sense of melody in the riffing, even though it's, you know, very fast, you know, it's almost a little bit repetitive in the trancey hypnotic way. It's got enough fury to it that it doesn't feel that laid back. And it's got enough, you know, melody to make sure that it's not too grating, even though they play it over and over. And that's been one of the strong points for Sulfuric Night. This band, like many of the others, have recorded a lot of different demos or splits. Uh, Sulfuric Night has all those collected onto a CD that I also have, just didn't pull out for this video. So you can hear how the band has progressed pretty rapidly leading up to Forever Cursed. But yeah, excellent album. Uh, works well. I do have to say, if I want to nitpick about something on these bands, I do wish, name your songs. Uh, it's I understand maybe you're trying to say that you don't need to be confined by the trapments of coming up with song titles or whatever, but you know, having them just numbered one, two, three, four, five, six, yeah, it's like, come on. I mean, come up with a song title. I mean, what's going to happen if somebody wants to go and cover one of these songs? It's like, I'm covering song one? That, that Nah, song titles. You do need song titles, absolutely. Anyway, Sulfuric Nights Forever Cursed. Uh, one of the cooler ones I have checked out. Hoping the band continues forward and releases more stuff in the future. They've had a couple of splits since the album came out. Uh, the last one of those was in 2021, so it feels like it's probably time for some more Sulfuric Night material to come out this year in 2023. I guess we'll see. All right, third and last entry for this video. We hop over to Belarus. I'm pretty sure this is the first time I've ever bought an album from a band that was located in Belarus. Uh, this act is called Pavesh N. Uh, it's three separate words. I had a heck of a time understanding this when uh, a guy at the record store was telling me about this. This was a case where they were playing this in the record store. Yes, my local record store is cool. They play weird European underground black metal. And I was just in there flipping through records, but heard this in the background. I was like, that's really, really good. So I went up and asked the guy what it was. He told me. After I had to ask him like three times to try to repeat the name, he just went over to the show. He's like, this is it. I'm just like, okay. Yep, I was not going to get that right anytime soon. So picked it up and turned out to be very, very good. This is their third album, uh, Maniac Manifest. They've done a couple before this. This one came out in 2021, if I am remembering correctly. Yes, 2021. Another project where very little is known about the artist. You'll see as we play the clip, I'll show the, some of the graphics associated with the vinyl. You know, very similar kind of you know, vibe that they're going for in aesthetics. And music here, once again, quite good. In fact, this one contains uh, one song that has become one of my favorites in this style of black metal. And that's what we're going to check out a clip of. It's called Sister of Sin. This is by Paveshin from Belarus. So there is some of Pavish N's Sister of Sin. Uh, I absolutely love that riff that they do at the start with the guitar doing you know, that, you know, uh, kind of little climbing. 
And they're using the drums in the background, just, you know, doing these big, you know, pops to give it this big, you know, kind of cavernous, roomy sound. Um, it almost has, you know, this kind of weird, creepy post-punk vibe, like something you would hear on early stuff by The Cure to an extent. Except here, of course, it's very much done through a black metal filter. The screams are absolutely tortured. It's something you hear lots of black metal bands do, and most of the time it's like, yeah, that's fine. This guy really gets in the zone with it to the point where it's got kind of the perfect balance where it's not too shrill, not too shrieky, um, has, you know, that little bit of morbidity that can make the hair on your neck stand up just a bit. So, yeah, the vocals are excellently done. The songs are put together very well. This isn't just, you know, random blasting or pounding away for the sake of sounding necro or cult. This is someone who's crafting some very cool songs along the way. Uh, there's also a big full-size poster that came with the vinyl. I won't unfold it because I'll have to back up like six feet for you to even see most of it. But yeah, Maniac Manifest by Pavishen. Really cool album. Not a band I've heard a lot of folks mention yet. A lot of the pictures that the individual involved has featured on this album and some of the others uh, they've taken a lot of pictures in some of the bone churches in Europe. There's a particular term for these. It's not ossuary. Maybe it is ossuary. But uh, you know, other folks have seen pictures of these too, where you have you know lots of human remains used for you know essentially lots of the architectural features. And that seems to be what uh, this person's used for their aesthetic. It fits the music quite well. All right, that is going to wrap it up for this time. So. We've checked out a few of the you know, extreme black metal underground acts circling throughout Europe. Let's talk black metal in the comments down below. What do you think of any of these particular acts? Some of these that you like, some of these that you don't like. Are there others in the same vein? I'm sure there are tons and tons of these you know, underground black metal bands out there. Sometimes they get kind of cookie cutter or they're trying to wear their influences on their sleeve a little too blatantly. Those are the bands I'm not as interested in hearing. I don't need to hear 14 bands try to recreate Transylvanian Hunger. Been there, done that. Done that a whole lot. <laughs> uh, but yeah, bands like this, uh, Sulfuric Night, where you're getting you know, this, you know, you know, very cool melodic elements you know, encased within your fury. Or Pavish In, where they're creating you know, these big soundscapes with very well-written songs. That's the kind of stuff I want to hear. So what other bands are worth checking out? As I mentioned, a lot of these bands have their own local scenes with the Black Plague Circle and such. I have not had time to explore all of those artists. I will work my way through them as time allows. Are there some I should check out before others? Are there some that I should skip? If there are some of these bands, again, that are maybe a little too sketchy and we don't need to talk about anymore in the future, that's fine. I'm not trying to cancel anyone, but at the same time, if bands are into stuff that people just don't dig... Well, folks have a right to know that so they can make an informed choice about what they want to listen to and what they want to buy. That will do it for this time. So, as always, everybody take care, and until next time, keep banging your head.